Every great anime needs a well-crafted power system, or in the case of One Piece, four. So I sit down to figure out once and for all how devil fruits, hockey, science, and weapons each work in the One Piece world, and how each of them balances and interacts with the rest. Starting of course with the power that might be the most important ability in the entire story, hockey. Now we're going to break down every single detail about this complex system, which includes some of the most devastating powers in the entire story. And the basics of hockey are fairly simple, but as you will soon see, it quickly branches into many unique paths of super powerful abilities as well. However, the basics go like this. There are two hockey abilities that anyone in the world can learn, and a third one that you basically have to be born with. And the first is armament hockey, in Japanese called busoshoku. Now essentially, this ability allows the user to form invisible armor, which enhances both offensive and defensive capabilities. This can be seen, for example, when this guy coats his entire body in hockey for a massive boost in defense. However, armament hockey doesn't just have to be a full body suit. It can also be applied to just certain parts of the body, like your hands or feet, to make them ridiculously strong as well. A perfect example of this is the Yonko Big Mom using hockey on just her arm to block Luffy's super powerful punch. Now, the second way that armament hockey can be used is to coat an item or a weapon in this invisible armor to make it super powerful. Examples of this include the basic pipe here becoming capable of shattering swords or these arrows being able to demolish entire boulders. But you can basically coat anything that you want to make it just ridiculously strong. And this super strong hockey can even protect you from other abilities in the One Piece world like Devil Fruits, which I just can't wait to talk about in a little bit. But first, the second basic type of hockey that anyone in the world can learn is Observation Hockey in Japanese called Kenbunshoku. Now, observation hockey lets the user sense the presence of others, even if those are hiding or using some sort of stealth ability. Observation hockey can also allow someone to sense the intention of a person, such as if they intend to hurt you or if they're actually quite friendly. As you might know, Luffy is especially skilled at this, but it is also shown by many other characters. And perhaps the single best example of this is the blind Admiral Fujitora, who uses his observation hockey to sense other locations, but also their intentions, even though he is technically blind. However, just like armament, observation hockey needs to be actively used. It's not just automatically on all the time. And we even learn in chapter 884 that if a person is emotionally unstable or rattled, like they're super sad or angry, then their observation hockey will be a lot less effective or not even work at all. And so these are the basics of the first two abilities. And while some characters are naturally better at one, one or the other, spending time training both of these two powers makes someone way more powerful and capable than an average fighter. Which honestly is kind of insane that just anyone in the One Piece world can train to be this strong, but only the absolute strongest characters have the third form of hockey, which is called Conqueress. In Japanese, this ability is called Haoshoku, and it is also known as the color of the Supreme King. Now, that's because this is a very special and unique type of hockey that not anyone can just learn. Only those who are actually born with exceptionally strong wills can actually use it. However, this ability is so rare that we're actually being told that only one out of several million million people are born with one. And in fact, only 18 characters in the entire canon storyline have actually been proven to have this ability, although four of them are already confirmed to be dead. And so clearly this ability is reserved for those with the will to become the strongest in the world, but what does it actually do? Well, the clearest example we've seen of Luffy using Conqueror's Hockey is when he unleashed an insane blast off his willpower to literally knock out 50 thousand weak-willed fighters during the Fishman Island arc. And so basically, this is a mental blast that can make weak-minded people go unconscious. Another great example of this is when the former Pirate King's right-hand man, Rayleigh, knocked out all of these people in the auction house on Saba Odi, and according to Rayleigh, this power can actually be trained so much to get better control of it, so it actually only affects the people that you actually want it to. However, while you can actually gain better control, Conqueror's Hockey cannot get stronger per 
per se because it is the embodiment of your strength of will. And as we'll explain in just a moment, not all Conqueror's Hockey users are even close to the same level of ridiculous strength. But now, you might be thinking that you already knew about all these basic forms of hockey, but did you know that there are actually different skill trees for this power system? I mean, yeah, that's right. It's kind of like playing an RPG with a sandbox system where you can unlock certain special abilities as you get stronger along a certain branch. And in fact, the last one of these abilities is absolutely game-changing for anyone wanting to be a top-tier fighter in One Piece. Now, we've already discussed with armaments that you can choose to either harden your own body or you can coat an object in that hockey. And while most people can do both, it takes an extraordinary amount of practice to become a true master at either one of these. However, during the Wano arc, we learned that there is actually an advanced form of armament hockey that only very few people actually ever master. This is called advanced armament, and there are actually two forms of this power. Now, these don't have official names in the story, but they're sometimes called what is known as emission or internal destruction. Basically, emission allows the user to extend their hockey coating out into the air to create this invisible force field on top of their skin. Now, this was first seen on Saba Odi when this sumo-looking dude smashed Luffy without even touching him. On the other hand, internal destruction involves extending your own hockey into an object or person so it is literally destroyed from the inside. And there's actually this wonderful panel back from chapter 947, which perfectly explains this concept, and in chapter 955 we actually see Luffy mastering it by demolishing this poor tree. And so together, these two advanced forms of hockey are way more powerful than normal armament hockey hardening. And we do know this because when Luffy punched the Yonko Kaido with only his basic level hockey, it didn't damage the Emperor like at all, but when he later learned advanced armament, he dealt significant damage to the King of the Beasts. Which now already takes us to observation hockey, which might actually surprise you because there are again multiple different branches that user can specialize in here. The first is commonly referred to as advanced observation hockey or future sight, which was a major factor in Luffy's battle against Katakuri here. Now this ability, as you might have guessed, allows the user to see slightly into the future, though how far does seem to depend on how skilled the user actually is. And while this is an ability that can be learned by observation hockey masters, I'm not sure if the other branch of observation hockey is quite so simple to actually learn. And that's because the other special branch is the ability to sense the emotions of other people. Now, this ability has only been shown by a few characters and it can actually have devastating consequences for the user. For instance, this little girl here was able to sense all of the fearful emotions of the people dying during the death games on Skypiea. Similarly, the Marine Kobe was completely overwhelmed by sadness when he sensed all of the people dying during the war at Marine Forts. Which of course only leaves us with the insane branches of Conqueror's Hockey, which is the ability that truly separates the great fighters from the absolute strongest beasts in the entire story. Now during Luffy's battle with Kaido, we learned that characters can actually unlock advanced Conqueror's Hockey as well, which is basically a superior version of advanced armament hockey. How this works is essentially advanced conquerors allows the user to coat themselves in literally their conqueror spirit. This exponentially increases the amount of damage delivered with each single blow and this ability is also what has led to some of the most famous scenes in the entire story where two of the strongest characters clash and they literally split the skies. However, while only a handful of characters have ever shown this ability, this is not even the highest level of advanced conquerors in the story. Because we're actually being told by the author himself that Shanks, for example, has such overwhelming conquerors hockey that he is known as the killer of observation hockey. What does that mean? Well, this makes enemies so intimidated that they can't even focus to use their own observation hockey. And as we see right here, this supreme level of conquerors hockey can even make a marine admiral run away crying for mercy. By the way, I can protect you from Gojo's advanced Conqueror's Hockey, but only if you make sure to subscribe to the channel. 
Now, you may be wondering that if Haki is so great, what's the point of even bothering with the other power systems in One Piece in the first place? However, while Haki allows anyone to grow ridiculously strong, almost all characters seem to enhance their fighting capabilities with some sort of truly powerful weapon. And uh, let me tell you, almost nothing beats the intense, heart-pounding excitement in my chest when a new weapon is introduced to the story. And I mean, the greatest thing about weapons is that most of them can literally be used by anyone and with the right weapon and enough training, even an average person can become a very deadly fighter in One Piece. And so let's start off with the most common type of weapon in the story, which is of course swords. Plus some other types of blades we'll just throw in here as well. Now, swords are commonly weapons used by basically every single group in the story. I mean, pretty much every pirate crew has one or more sword fighters. Most common marines use a blade and even some characters like this this invisible man combine their devil fruit abilities with incredible swordsmanship. And what's actually incredibly helpful for power scaling swords in One Piece is that there's actually an in-world system all crafted specifically for ranking each of these blades. And I actually recently made a video about the 13 strongest swords in One Piece where I explained that in detail. But essentially in a nutshell, here's how it works. Because some swords receive a rank based on their impressive feats, special characteristics, and their strength as a blade. This ranking includes an unknown number of graded swords, 50 skillful great swords, 21 great great swords, and at the top of the ranking, the 12 supreme great blades. And while we don't have the full list of all of these incredible weapons, there are a few that are instantly recognizable all around the world, like these ones right here. And while swords are by far the most common type of blade, some of the strongest fighters in the story use different types of blades. Now, these include the former warlord Lord's strongest man, Whitebeards, whose Naginata is one of the 12 supreme greats, and Goldie Rogers, third in command, Scopa Gaban, who is a dual axe wielder, which is actually pretty unique in the story. And while some of these blades are truly overpowered, they aren't even close to as strong as some of the weapons coming up in just a moment. But if blades aren't really your thing, there's also a ridiculous variety of insanely strong and unique weapons to choose from, such as this Lightning Man's Golden Staff. Kaido's spiked club, Katakuri's overpowered trident, and even an actual lightsaber, which was just recently revealed in the manga. How cool is that? Now, these are some of the more traditional weapons in the One Piece world, but some of the most powerful ones are those that you won't find anywhere outside of One Piece. A perfect example of this is the dials from Skypea. These special shells can be used to store different types of energy, which is honestly a little bit weird, but we'll let it slide because it is a very cool concept. For example, this giant priest here has a belt full of axe styles, which releases a slashing blast that can even cut through iron. Or another one is a flame dial, which can actually be used to shoot actual fire, or the most overpowered of all the dials, the reject dial, which releases whatever force it has absorbed, but multiple applied by 10. Hmm? Oh yeah, and you can use these dials to massively enhance other weapons such as the heat dial combined with this lance to make it a super heated weapon. And even Usopp used dials to improve Nami's weather baton. Which is kind of crazy that all of these types of powers come from the shell of a living creature. But dials are far from the only weapons in the story that are actually alive in some form. And that's because a few weapons in the One Piece world are actually living, breathing creatures, which include this elephant sword and this doggy cannon, which were both weapons that were actually fed a devil fruit. However, the next set of weapons is going to get much, much bigger. And that's because we're now talking about ships, which can bring massive destruction to entire islands, as we've seen with the island of Ohara and Ennis Lobby. However, while a powerful fleet of ships can be absolutely devastating, even they can be taken out by strong weapons. In particular, there is a super special type of sword called a Black Blade, which we've seen take down massive ships with one swing. Now, these infamous Black Blades are some of the most powerful powerful weapons in the story, and so far one of the rarest in the One Piece world. But even those famous blades are pitiful compared to the most powerful weapons in the entire story, because now let's of course discuss the legendary ancient weapons 
Poseidon, Pluton, and Uranus. And uh, while you may not consider these normal weapons, they are literally called weapons, so I wanted to talk about them in this category. And you're just running around in the background, I can tell. You, you be free. And actually, Uranus is the one that we know the least about. And since Poseidon is an underwater power and Pluton is a ship that rides on the ocean, it is widely theorized that Uranus is a weapon that can fly in the air, such as this mysterious ability that we see raining down lasers right here. And although recent chapters might hint that this mysterious weapon is not actually Uranus, certainly it would be a power at least equally as destructive as this. And so while swords are clearly awesome, they certainly cannot be called the strongest weapons in the story when compared to these incredible ancient weapons. But that's not to say that swords and other blades aren't massively strong in their own right, especially when they are combined with hockey. Because as we already discussed, strong fighters can coat their weapons with hockey to massively raise their attack power and even allow them to slice down literal mountains. In fact, some of the strongest pirates in the entire story, such as the Red Hair Pirates and Goldie Rogers crew, exclusively used weapons combined with overwhelming hockey. Which in a world full of powerful devil fruits is kind of incredible to think about, but this next power system in One Piece has the potential to make everything I've discussed so far completely unnecessary. Because weapons? <laughs> Garbage. Hockey? Pfft, don't, don't need it. Get, get the hell out of here. Uh, that's because science is about to take over the One Piece world. So strap in because one of the most mind-blowing secrets that we recently learned was that the One Piece world used to be a way more technologically advanced civilization. And this includes this giant robot that apparently has been around since the Void Century. And this is just the barest tip of the iceberg of what appears to have been possible in the past. That is, of course, before the world government destroyed most technology to send the world nearly back to the Stone Age. I get a delivery. What's this? Is this future cloning technology or some advanced weapon? What could it be? <laughs> Now, today scientists are just barely catching up to what was possible in the past in One Piece, but people all around the world are actually creating incredible and deadly scientific inventions. This also includes Frankie, who's able to make his own giant robots and super powerful ships and turn himself into a cyborg, and even characters like Chopper, who uses his scientific knowledge to cure every type of illness. And we actually saw Chopper's abilities on full display when he quickly cured this only plague during the raid on Kaido's castle. And while this artificial virus created by this funky dinosaur nearly wiped out thousands of people, this gassy scientist is actually also extraordinarily skilled at making weapons with terribly destructive power. Isn't that right, mysteriously moving box? And among his terrifying scientific weapons are this cat, but also bombs that can destroy entire islands, poison gases that can incapacitate a whole island of strong fighters, and he was even in the process of using drugs to turn children into literal giants. And yet Caesar's awful scientific contributions aren't over yet because during the Wano arc we saw firsthand the horrible effects of his worst invention ever. Because these are the artificial devil fruits that he created for the Emperor Kaido. Now these fruits are actually made by combining specific chemicals with the genetic factors of animals and then this chemical liquid is actually used to water trees which then grow these artificial devil fruits. And those fruits give only one in ten people some sort of twisted animal ability, while the other nine are cursed to only smile and laugh. Truly an awful, very unethical invention. However, Caesar is of course not the only mad scientist we've come to know in the story who has done some crazy inventions. In fact, Sanji's father is a scientist himself and is an expert in cloning and genetic modification, even going as far as to modify his children into emotional weapons of destruction. However, the Windsmoke's most most impressive creations are the raid suits, which are kind of like a Power Ranger suit that give its user a huge boost in speed, power and durability, plus each suit has its own special ability such as invisibility, explosions, electricity or even poison. Which you know just goes to show that science can be very destructible and powerful in One Piece, but not all
all technology ends up in the wrong hands, because Nami's weather manipulation, for example, is a perfect enhancement for her natural abilities. That's because she uses her climb attack combined with her knowledge gained during the time skip to create rain, strong wind gusts, lightning, and even create mirages, as we can see during her fight in Ennis Lobby. And in addition, one of the most powerful scientific advancements in the world is also one of the most common, and that's because someone once figured out how to turn the natural telepathic abilities of these snails into a literal communication device. This resulted in the transponder snails, which is basically like a phone and allows people to communicate all the way across the world, which, if you use the real world as an example, undoubtedly changed the way the entire world can function. But if we're talking about super powerful technology, then there's of course one man whose creations stand above everyone else, and that is Dr. Vegapunk. Now, this genius scientist and user of the brain devil fruit, a little foreshadowing here, has truly broken through the barriers of technological advancement. And if you want to know why this could make other weapons and hockey obsolete, just listen to this. Because here is what we know for a fact that Dr. Vegapunk has invented. First, there were these super powerful cyborgs who were literally able to shoot laser beams. Next, we learned that he was recreating devil fruits, such as a literal copy of Kaido's super powerful dragon fruit. And just recently, we learned that he can actually make fully functioning clones, which once again broke basically the entire story. But his absolutely strongest creations have to be this squad of genetically modified clones called the Seraphim, who are so supremely powerful that they can even fight against Yonko like Blackbeard and Luffy. They have unbelievable strength, speed, healing, and the Lunarian Flame, which makes them nearly invincible, plus their copied Devil Fruit abilities on top of all that. Which is just insane to think about, because what if the world government could recreate an entire army of those Seraphim? But what's crazy though is that this isn't even the only world-destroying weapon in the world government's hands, because as we already discussed, they have the power to literally wipe out islands with this laser firing airship of destruction. And while it does seem that even a power like this seems to have some sort of limit on how often it can be used, it is surely a weapon of mass destruction that is a major threat to Luffy's friends all across the world. And so clearly, if this technology is allowed to get into the wrong hands, even the strongest pirates and marines wouldn't stand a chance. So maybe it was actually a good thing that the world government erased all of this dangerous technology years ago, maybe? And while science doesn't really interact with hockey much in the story so far, advancements in technology have clearly led to the creations of many advanced types of weapons, as we've already explained, and who knows, maybe the secret ruler of the world government, Emu, has lived ever since the Void Century with some sort of super advanced technology as well. Now personally, I think that the much more likely reason behind Emu's abilities is the most famous power in the One Piece world though, Devil Fruits. And the secrets of these legendary fruits are one of the true mysteries remaining in the story, so let's explain exactly how this power system works as well. Now, the basic idea of a Devil Fruit is that there are these magical swirly fruits and anyone who eats one instantly gains the powers of that devil forever. The only major downsides to consuming one is that they lose the ability to swim for good, which means if they fall into the oceans with no one around to save them, well, get by Devil Fruit user. And a few other important details are that there is ever only one of each type of power in the world at the same time. For example, there cannot be two Lightning Fruit users at the same time. Well, actually, that's kind of not true anymore, but I'll talk more about recreated Devil Fruits in just a minute. And also, once a Devil Fruit user dies, their power transfers into some other fruit in the world that is close to it. So basically, it is reincarnated incarnated and someone else can eat it next. How exactly does this work? Well, we do not know yet for certain, but there seems to be some sort of either actual devil or some sort of essence or magical energy within a fruit that chooses to leave once its host is gone. And it's also important to note that devil fruits, despite appearing quite a lot, are actually pretty rare in the One Piece world overall. Even though we do see a ton of them in the story, that's only because over time most of them have accumulated in the Grand Line where basically all of the strong pirates and marines have been located. But if you're just a random person in the North Blue, you may not even know that devil fruits actually exist and might just think that it's some sort of fairy tale. Now, 
There are three basic categories of devil fruit powers, which are zone fruits, which basically turn you into an animal, logia fruits, which turn the user into some sort of element or substance, and paramecia fruits, which have some rules, but also include a lot of random powers that just don't fit into any other category that we'll discuss in just a moment. But first, zones, which originally were known as the weakest variety, but that has kind of changed recently. Like I just mentioned, this category of fruits allows the user to transform into an animal, granting them immense strength and stamina, and depending on the fruit, even some unique bonus abilities as well. There are of course tons of normal types of devil fruits in the story, such as the giraffe, anaconda, and many many more. Now, these basic zones allow you to have your normal human form, an animal-human hybrid form, and a full animal transformation. And while these are not as interesting, just wait because there are also special categories of zone fruits that grant super unique abilities and might actually be the most interesting ones in the entire story. And there are also categories like the carnivore category, which includes fruits like a leopard or a wolf, which makes the user naturally more ferocious during battle. There's also the ancient zone category, which is basically a group of dinosaurs and other prehistoric creatures, such as the paternodon fruit, saber-toothed tiger fruit, the mammoth fruit, and this one, which I'm not even gonna try to pronounce. <clears throat> now, these ancient zones are actually much, much rarer than the other zones and have even more durability and recovery powers than the basic animal ones. However, this also brings us to the most powerful type of devil fruit in the story, probably mythical zone fruits. Now, these devil fruits turn the user into some mythical creature of legend. For example, the Buddha, a dragon, or even this eight-headed Yamato no Orochi fruit. But on top of all the uh, normal zone benefits, mythical zone users each also have a unique special ability related to their devil fruit. For example, the phoenix fruit user can use these blue flames for healing, and this wolf deity has frosty ice powers. Which brings us to the ultimate power of every single devil fruit, which is awakening. This is a special ability that is only achieved after years of training and perfecting your devil fruit power and your body accepting your ability. And for zones, awakening your devil fruit grants the user an even more insane boost in speed, stamina, power, and recovery, because awakening basically makes you even even more of a tank. And some awakenings even come with special powers of their own, like when Luffy awakened his mythical zone sun god Nika fruit and gained the power to make his imagination into reality. Which, I mean, let's be honest, is most likely the most broken ability in all of One Piece, but for over 1000 chapters, we actually thought it belonged to the Paramecia category of devil fruits, because this group is the most common type of devil fruit. It's basically really a truly mixed bag of abilities, which basically allows Oda-sensei to include any power that pops into his imagination and push it into that category. However, it does include some of the most insane abilities in the entire story. And typically, Paramecia itself can kind of be separated into three different categories. There are Paramecia fruits that allow the user to change their body in some way, such as this guy turning into diamonds, this one turning into any weapon they choose, or this guy turning invisible. The second category of Paramecias are powers that alter the environment in some way or form. Now, one of the most famous examples is the Marine Admiral Fujitora's gravity fruit, which allows him to alter gravity as he chooses, like when he lifts all the rubble after the Battle of Dressrosa. Or another great example are Kurason's silence powers, which lets him cancel all noises within a certain bubble. And the third type of Paramecia fruit allows its user to produce a substance from their body. Some pretty awesome examples of this are the Warden of Impel Down, who can produce a ton of different types of venoms and poison from his body, or the former Waller Doflamingo, who can produce and control string from his body, as we saw throughout the Dress Rosa arc. And now, while these three categories mostly make sense, there are also some super quirky, unique abilities that don't quite fit into any of these three. For example, during Luffy's major battle against Katakuri, we learned that the Mochi fruit is a special paramecia, which allows the user to both turn into Mochi and produce mochi as well. Or another special devil fruit is Lost Ope Ope no Mi, which has some absolutely incredible powers. Now, how it works is that he can basically manipulate anything within his operating room, which means that he can swap people's personalities, change their body parts around, like Mr. Potato Head, but 
it. Just like the previous Devil Fruit, this one also has a special ability called the Perpetual Youth Surgery, which when used can give one person eternal youth, at least we assume, which might be the most important power in the entire story. Which of course now also brings us to the ultimate power of Paramecia Fruits, which is of course their Awakening. And while this has not been fully explained quite yet, we have seen a good amount of examples of Awakened Devil Fruits that give us a pretty good idea of how it works for Paramecias. Essentially, an Awakened Paramecia user can grant the ability of their Devil Fruit to some part of the environment. For example, we mentioned that Doflamingo can produce strength from his body, but after using his Awakening, he can basically turn the ground, buildings, and anything else in his surrounding into string that he can control as he wishes. Which, as you can imagine, is incredibly useful in a fight, but the most naturally powerful category of Devil Fruits are the godlike Logia Devil Fruits. That's because with a single bite of a Logia Fruit, a person instantly becomes some sort of element or special substance. For example, the Marine Admiral Akainu literally becomes magma, and the former Warlord Crocodile is completely made up of sand. And unlike Paramecia Fruits, this basically means that Logia users are invincible against any normal fighters because normal attacks without hockey will just pass right through their elemental bodies, or they can quickly reform just like this Logia Fruit user right here. Although there are two major exceptions to this, which we'll explain in just a moment. And I must also clarify that a Logia Fruit user must be actively using their powers to become untouchable. So if they're just being caught by surprise, they can still be hit by any normal attack. But invincibility is of course not the only benefit of this overpowered category of Devil Fruits, because they can also produce near unlimited amounts of their particular elements. For instance, the Flame Logia user Sabo can produce enormous amounts of fire, and the Lightning Logia Fruit user Enel can generate tons of basically limitless lightning. And while most of these fruits are elements, we have seen some recent examples that suggest that it can be any sort of substance. For example, Karibu here has a Swamp Logia, which lets him produce swampy mud that can literally absorb people into a pocket dimension, just like these helpless mermaids right here. Plus, the revolutionary army commander Karasu here has the Soot Logia, which lets him produce and control dark soot at will, which he apparently loves to turn into crows that can attack and even carry messages. However, there is one Logia fruit that is unlike the rest, and that is Blackbeard's Darkness Logia fruit. And before we go any further, I must say that it is entirely possible that this isn't actually a Logia fruit. I mean, there are a ton of theories that this is actually just like Luffy, a mythical zone, and it's just been covered up for hundreds of years as well. And I'm saying all of this because it has some truly unique and out of line abilities. For example, Blackbeard's body is not immune to normal attack like other Logia fruits. In fact, in chapter 441, Blackbeard explicitly explains that because his Darknet fruit sucks everything in, it also absorbs damage from any attack. However, this same characteristic is also one of the special abilities of the Darkness fruit, because as we see in the same chapter, Blackbeard can use the gravity of Darkness to pull the actual bodies of Devil Fruit users as well. And by some weird process that we still don't understand, as long as Blackbeard is touching a Devil Fruit user, User, he can literally absorb the power of the Devil Fruit, which means that that person loses the ability to use it. Which is just a supremely overpowered ability, considering many of the strongest fighters in the world do have Devil Fruit abilities. In fact, this power may also be what allowed Blackbeard to eat two Devil Fruits in the first place, but that is more theory than fact at this point. But despite the near invincibility of Logia Fruit users, there is one hard counter to their ability. And that's because if a person knows armament hockey, then they are just able to deal regular damage to a Logia Fruit user, just like as if they were punching a normal person. Now, so far we've not really gotten an explanation why this works, but we see it in action throughout the post time skip, and it's kind of assumed that your willpower forces the body to materialize, maybe by suppressing the devil in the fruit. And one other weakness for Logia users is if their particular element has a natural weakness. For for example, the Sand Logia user Crocodile was able to be hit by Luffy even without Haki because his sand got wet. This apparently hardened his body enough so that Luffy could actually hit him, and NL's lightning powers also did not affect Luffy's rubber, and Luffy was able to punch the previously invincible self-proclaimed god as well. And so the last 
remaining and most mysterious part of Devil Fruits in the story are Logia Fruit users' awakenings, because we've only seen one possible example of this, which was the epic clash with the Marine Admirals Akainu and Aokiji during the time skip. Now, this clash involved two of the most powerful Logia Fruit users in the story, who we assume have to have awakened abilities, and their powers were so strong that the island of Punk Hazard was permanently split into wastelands of ice and fire. And just how Logia Fruit users are affected by armament hockey, a Paramecia Devil Fruit is affected as well. For example, we were told by Trafalgar Law during the rooftop battle on Wano that he can't simply teleport Big Mom and Kaido because their hockey is much more powerful than his. And Luffy also uses his hockey to enhance his Devil Fruit abilities by creating Gear 4th, which basically means focusing his armament hockey on different parts of his body to force his rubber into certain forms. And so in other words, while hockey can interfere or enhance many Devil Fruit abilities, Haki is not the only power system that crosses over with Devil Fruits. And that's because, in fact, Devil Fruit powers can be combined with weapons. And this can happen in a more normal sense, like when the former Yonko Whitebeard combined his Tremor Fruit powers with his Naginata to smash into opponents, or also someone like Eustace Kit who uses his Magnetism Fruit to actually create some truly awesome looking weapons, such as this massive railgun, which he used to fight Big Mom. And this, of course, also includes the actual Devil Fruit weapon hybrid that we already discussed that were created by Dr. Vegapunk who was somehow able to infuse a devil fruit into a normal weapon. But in addition to this and all of Vegapunk's other really impressive scientific achievements, Vegapunk has actually been able to use science to recreate and clone devil fruit powers. First, he made an actual copy of Kaido's mythical devil fruit, but while Vegapunk considered the fruit a failure, it lets Momo fully transform into a giant pink version of the dragon, which does seem fairly successful to me personally at least. And while Vegapunk perfected this process, we already mentioned that Caesar also tried to make artificial devil fruits, though they were a lot less effective and came with massive drawbacks. And as far as we know, Vegapunk never actually made an actual devil fruit again, but what he actually did was maybe even scarier. That's because he somehow took the genetic factor of a devil fruit user and infused it into his overpowered Seraphim clones to give them actual devil fruit powers of that user. We first saw this happen in chapter 1065 when the Seraphim S Shark was introduced who then soon after used the powers of the Swim Fruit. Which is of course the perfect power for the clone of the world's strongest fishman in the story, but an even greater match was giving the Dice Fruit to S Hawk, the clone of Mihawk, which turns the clone of the strongest swordsman in the world into a literal blade human. But that's not even the strongest of the Seraphim Devil Fruit powers because Vegapunk even duplicated the paw fruit, which is such a broken ability that I absolutely had to include it in my ranking of the top 5 most overpowered devil fruits in One Piece, which you can watch right here. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one. And I'm honestly really proud and impressed that you sat through this entire video, so uh, leave me a comment if you did.